Chandrayaan-3 is carrying the hopes, dreams and aspirations of 1.4 billion Indians to the moon. As the D-Day for the landing of Chandrayaan-3 inches closer, the world is looking on in anticipation at this event. Meanwhile, ISRO has released a fresh set of images captured by the land uh, hazard detection and avoidance camera. The camera which shall help identify the landing spot is take pictures of the far side of the moon where some craters in a plain area can be seen. Subsequently, ISRO has informed that the lander module has now established two-way communication with the Chandrayaan-2 orbiter. With a lofty goal, the stakes are certainly high and if India achieves its objectives, it will make a mark as the very first country to make a successful soft landing on the south pole of the moon's surface. Let's go straight across and get you more details on this big feat and of course on uh, our uh, uh, pictures, the latest ones that of course have been accessed by uh, uh, Team ISRO. So here you can see the first image which has been sent uh, so far through one of the cameras of course uh, which is on the lander. So lunar far side area as shown from the lander has a detection and avoidance uh, camera. Uh, on board, of course, uh, Chandrayaan, you can see, of course, those pictures there. Complex craters are very, very visible on the northeast limb of the moon. You can clearly see uh, this is what the moon is looking like from that uh, camera. You can see, of course, the craters are pretty evident, pretty visible there. 86 kilometers in diameter is reportedly this crater that has been seen on the moon's surface. The rim is uneven and has a number of terraces as well. Now this uh, has a central peak uh, complex and a ray system as well. Those are all details coming in regarding the moon and regarding the crater which can be seen in the visuals. It's relatively isolated from the other named craters, the other craters that we uh, know of. It can be partially hidden from Earth due to its location as well. And uh, it's uh, been formed obviously by the uh, impact of a large asteroid or comet with the surface of the moon. That's how that crater was created. Okay, so uh, those of course are the pictures. That's a Hain crater which uh, you can see there on your uh, screens. And uh, uh, we will of course continue to get you those pictures. But let's discuss this a bit with our guests uh, joining us at this point. Dr. W. Selvamurthy, former distinguished uh, scientist, is joining us live. We also have Wing Commander Sudhakaran, former Indian Air Force officer. Also joining us live is Dr. S. R. Chakravarti, IIT Agnikul uh, advisor. And uh, let me uh, bring you in here first, uh, Professor Chakravarti, on these pictures emerging. Uh, these latest pictures uh, accessed by us uh, showing a crater, a very uh, interesting crater of the moon. What do you make of it? Okay, I think we've lost uh, Dr. Chakravarti there. Uh, Dr. Selvamurthy, uh, are you there with us? Yes, please. Okay, Dr. Selvamurthy, uh, what do you make of these uh, pictures and this uh, crater which has been pictured uh, by this uh, camera on board Chandrayaan-3? See, it's the resolution of the images that we are getting from this lander hazard detection camera is very, very good. That means the resolution is good and the cameras are functioning very well. And uh, so these images certainly indicate the craters, which is particularly in the southern part of the moon, the craters, there are so many craters. And the image that you are getting indicates the, the magnitude of the craters in terms of X, Y, Z. So uh, this will help us to identify where exactly the uh, lander has to land. So the cam now the onboard computers, as well as the messages coming from the ground station of ISRO, now they'll be looking at whether the original place where it has been uh, scheduled to land. So we will look at a safer place to land because the margin of tolerance for landing is also much higher. Earlier in the Chandrayaan 2, it was only 500, 500 meters. But now it has been increased to four kilometers to 2.5 kilometers. So we still have the, the tolerance limit in terms of identifying the landing site. 
So these camera images are very important to do that. The health of the camera is working very well and the images are perfect. And so this will help us to understand that where exactly we need to land safely. So uh, I'm very happy that the mission so far has been going extremely well, as has been predicted by uh, ISRO. And we are already there on the pre-landing orbit. And in the we were looking at 30, kilom uh, 30 kilometers, but we are at 25 kilometers. These type of tolerance is available, so nothing to be worried. Instead of 30, we are in 25, or instead of 100, we are in 130. These are all uh, things which can easily be worked out by ISRO because we have the communication. Another important thing which has happened is the lander is able to communicate with Chandrayaan 2 orbiter. So this is again for communication. Uh, this will be yet another the route because normally from ground station, it goes to ISDN and then gets into uh, the uh, lander. So now uh, the, uh, the uh, also the, pr the propulsion module. So you have now another channel which is available through Chandrayaan 2. So all this will help ISRO scientists to negotiate and also the, the trajectory for landing. So I'm very confident that the landing which is planned for day after tomorrow, 23rd August at about 604 will be very, very successful. And I'm so happy about the precision and also the uh, the resolution of the camera images which has been set. Yes, uh, absolutely. Let me, uh, in fact, uh, also uh, uh, take that straight across to uh, uh, Wing Commander Sudhakaran as well. Wing Commander Sudhakaran, already uh, a different aspect of the moon uh, being accessed by us, courtesy Chandrayaan 2, uh, Ch Chandrayaan 3, beg your pardon, and it's not even landed yet. Uh, what do you make of the Hain crater uh, that is, uh, can be seen in these visuals and a uh, different side of the moon that we're already discovering? Uh, the Lunar and the Planetary Scientific Analysis Group, uh, which uh, is probably called as the LPSAG, uh, uh, also known as the, um, the Hazard Detection and Avoidance uh, Center, that's what uh, looks into uh, and assesses where this Vikram lander has to finally land. Now, that is very important because the Pragyan rover, which is going to subsequently conduct the experiments, which is the ultimate goal of this mission, because it is not going to, you know, it is not about touching the moon and coming back. It's about, you know, being able to conduct missions there. And that means giving the Pragyan the right kind of environment for it to navigate because it doesn't have the kind of potential which a rocket has because a rocket doesn't need to encounter obstacles on the terrain so it is very very important that it has to look at a series of parameters which includes the topography the gravitational field which the uh, LSTAC uses data on the gravitational field on the landing site to assess the stability of the landing area uh, the soil composition there, uh, you know, that is very important to assess the risk of dust storms and other hazards. Because if in case there is a dust storm that, you know, suddenly crops up, uh, it could, uh, you know, undermine everything from your uh, charging system, your powering system to your communication system. So all these are very, very critical uh, things. The temperature uh, in the landing site, you know, uh, it shouldn't get uh, give thermal shocks to both the rover as well as the lander and uh, the radiation levels because you know unlike the earth which is protected by an intense magnetic field and an ozone layer in moon it is not uh, the same so the radiation levels can uh, you know cause significant level of uh, interference and these are the parameters that uh, you know these photographs merely are not looking at images they are looking at uh, the quality of the site in terms of whatever parameters that i have suggested uh, it also look at, uh, you know, what is the ease with which Pragyan rover can, because if they feel that there is proximity to a potential suspect site, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, giving some kind of an idea as to availability of certain minerals, waters, or whatever it is. So it would like to have it as close as possible. So these things are extensively done by an independent group and uh, 
you know, uh, it's very difficult for us to sit and uh, do here because ISRO is a very, very professional body. Please understand the Russians sent their Luna 25. They wanted to be there along with India. They reached moon 20, almost, uh, you know, 30, 40 years before India even dreamt of doing it. But despite doing all those things, uh, we are there today. Their Luna 25 has failed. Which doesn't, you know, we, there is nothing to rejoice about it because, you know, the failure in the scientific community, it is the, uh, you, know, you know, failure of humanity as a whole. That's how we have to see it. But what I want to stress here is it's not an easy mission. A country like Russia, which has been well equipped, which has got the scientists, which has got the experience, background, they have not been able to, you know, get it right. And, and ISRO has been doing wonders and it's been making us proud, hasn't it? It has taken us to Mangalyaan right in their first attempt. Chandrayaan, yes, we learned uh, from our mistakes. And and so far, you know, last one month I've been associated with your channel and we've been continuously discussing on it. Everything that has happened till date has been copybook style. Really proud of Team Isro, really proud of the professionals there. Kudos to them. Yes. And then we hope and pray that we do wonders again in the moon and plant a flag. Absolutely, we're certainly we're certainly waiting for that. Okay, let's uh, now quickly examine another uh, aspect of uh, the Chandrayaan three as we uh, build up to that uh, moment of, of course, soft landing. So let's uh, quickly now uh, go across to more pictures. In fact, uh, coming in the lunar far side now, as image from the lander has a detection and avoidance uh, camera on board Chandrayaan three uh, on August 19, 2023, has sent these pictures as well. So also pictures have been sent of the mayor. Humboldt Tianam Crater. Now, this is a lunar mare or a dark basaltic plain uh, which can be seen. It's located along the northeastern limb of the moon. And uh, this is something that was named after German naturalist Alexander von Humboldt. So, that's uh, whom this was named after. Uh, it's relatively young, having formed during uh, the late. Imbrian period about 3.8 to 3.6 billion years ago. Surrounded by a large impact basin, which is about 650 kilometers in diameter. So that's uh, the surrounding aspect of this crater. It's smooth and relatively featureless, with a few small craters uh, in the middle as well. The largest crater in the mare, Humboldtianim uh, Belkovich, uh, which has uh, a diameter of about 100 kilometers. So that's the largest uh, crater that is there. Uh, uh, and just taking that back across to Wing Commander Sudhakaran, just help uh, viewers understand uh, how these craters were formed, what are the circumstances uh, which caused their formation? See, uh, uh, the latest, you know, that we know of uh, how the moon itself formed was, it actually uh, is a part of Earth which got dislodged you know after uh, you know bombardment of some cosmic uh, uh, objects which uh, you know formed uh, which which bombarded into earth and when this se separated you know the moon was not spherical as spherical as it was so it was very wobbly it was very uh, oblong and then over a period of time when it uh, stabilized that's when the moon achieved this state and then it was continuously bombarded by a lot of cosmic objects, uh, uh, which includes asteroids and things like that. And that's how uh, uh, these uh, shapes have been formed over a period of time. It is only as recent as the last 100 years that they come to know about all these things. Because otherwise, the incomplete Western world 200 years believed that the Earth is at the center of the universe and the, the sun was rotating it. So uh, these things have uh, been... Uh, you know, a certain after, uh, you know, this uh, Big Bang Theory came into, uh, it, it was discovered that the, the Big Bang Theory is the whole uh, genesis of all our cosmic existence and then the planets were formed and then how they were formed, the role of Jupiter in shaping up the destiny of Earth and then from there, you know, the moon had uh, come out and then how these asteroids bombarded the moon and then uh, these uh, craters were formed. Uh, now it is time for us to do the second level of exploration to understand uh, what is the composition of moon, you know, where does it come from, uh, is there anything significantly different from what is there in earth, but then 
to what I have been given to understand and uh, so far what I have read is that we are genetically the same, the Earth and the Moon, because uh, the Moon is technically a sibling of the Earth, you know, which is born out of Earth itself. Yes, uh, and that is something, of course, which now we are discovering. Dr. Selva Murthy, just tell us about uh, the difference between these two craters that have been pictured on the far side of the moon, uh, what the uniqueness about them uh, is. Did he, and, uh, when, when, and when you believe they date back to? Right. See, the one of the mission uh, objective is really to understand how the moon came into existence. If you look at why we are going to southern part of the moon is also one of the purposes. Many of the things which happen during the formation of moon is preserved there, whether it is craters or the southern part which is totally frozen because some of the peaks are so high, the sunlight doesn't fall at all. It is totally dark. So whatever has happened at the time of the formation of the moon as a natural satellite coming from the earth, many things are preserved as it is. So that is why we will be able to understand the age and how this evolution took place, how this, the, the natural satellite was formed. Everything we'll be able to study when you go to particularly the southern part. And the craters, which you said you wanted to compare these two craters, See, the craters are formed when uh, the whole yet the, the moon was uh, formed as a satellite. These impact created those seismic activities and also the uh, craters were formed. Like when you say the continental drift, when the, uh, the whole continent shifts and then you have the different continents formed. Similar thing happens when the impact is there, the craters are formed and the heights are different the sunlight falling on those are different because of the height difference and so the temperatures. So if you look at the southern part, it will be about uh, 204, minus 204 degrees Celsius is the temperature because the it doesn't have the sunlight coming at all. It's a total darkness in certain areas. So these are all the things and also composition. So like even though it came from Earth, you won't have the oxygen water we have been able to get it uh, whether the microbes were there at the time of formation even though it went from here so these all this by looking at methane and we are looking at uh, all those indications whether even microbes exist or existed when this formation happened so we will be able to understand everything so the going to southern part was conscious decision from the isro scientists perhaps to look at all this and make make a uh, from this, they will also be looking at how do we inhabit this southern part or the moon at all. So for which this mission is important. So the craters which they have, images which have been given uh, is a very good indication that we will be able to now look at, avoid those hazardous areas and go to the best place to land. So these, these are very important images and I compliment the ISRO scientists who have made this happen so far, the mission as was told by Commander Sudhakaran. The mission has been very, very precise and uh, the reliability of the ISRO scientists is very high because we have worked with, from my DRDO days, we work at the rigorous reviews which they carry out for everything, the planning which is done, Six Sigma in the whole management and governance, they don't allow even a single error. So this whole mission was based on the fault, what we had in the Chandrayaan 2, and that was the basis on which how do we address all those factors which led to the failure in Chandrayaan 2, was the basis for which to plan the Chandrayaan 3. Even for the last 15 minutes of terror, the redundancy has been built. So in everything, right from the onboard computers, the softwares, the glitches which occurred at that time, is all and then sensors, additional sensors which have been put, the additional cameras which have been put, will take care of some of the unknown variables which could happen. Like Dr. Vikramar uh, Sudhakaran said, the gravitational force is another one. It's coming at a velocity of about, let's say, 6,000 6, kilometers per hour. And uh, then you need to reduce the velocity because now the moon, yet uh, the lunar gravitational force is pulling towards it. 
and the whole uh, the ladder is coming at a particular velocity so the reverse thruster has to be made active so these all corrections have to be done in fraction of seconds and seconds so that is why now it will become autonomous once we have uh, the last 15 minutes you won't be able to make corrections from uh, down below or uh, from the ground stations so but then it has to be completely autonomous descent but then the softwares and the hardwares which are attached along with the payloads which carry has all been planned to see that we do have a soft landing and I have tremendous confidence in the ISRO scientists and we will succeed. I can tell the viewers that to keep readiness for the groundbreaking moment, the historical moment India will be making by putting the flag of uh, Indian flag on the southern part which is for the first time because people have landed in the close to equators in other region. Yes, the, the point, the place of the landing makes this unique. Dr. Chakravarti, come in here on what you make of these fresh images and uh, visuals which we have uh, got from our lander, from our uh, Chandrayaan-3 already, from its, uh, one of its cameras uh, regarding these craters, regarding this uh, different side of the moon now that we are discovering further. Well, I think the, all these things are, uh, you know, a part of a, a program to orchestrate a confidence building that ISRO is doing this time around specifically to point out that uh, barring a last minute glitch that they may have, the mission is not any by any means a complete failure at all. Uh, you will actually get a payback on the different payloads that are there in the different uh, modules that are there, the propulsion module or the lander or the rover. Um, you will actually get uh, feedback from them in terms of their uh, um, the photographs that you get or the samples that you will have to uh, test and so on at the different stages of the mission. And that has actually at least started uh, maybe about 10, 10 days back when we actually went to the moon um, the first time. And now we are actually getting more and more of those as the lander is now approaching a lower and lower uh, orbit and a uh, distance from the uh, lunar surface. So that is, I think, the main um, main uh, objective of these uh, uh, these photographs being released in the first place. But the locations of the photographs themselves actually would have been chosen by the scientists based on their um, uh, geological interest. Um, I think as uh, uh, Dr. Salvamurti was pointing out, uh, the chosen site is actually very, very uh, important uh, from a, uh, a utilization point of view, the lunar uh, 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 what do you call um, the, the resources re utilization point of view? I think the whole world is actually looking for um, some precious uh, data from from there. Um, that's actually as far as the landing site is concerned. But throughout the uh, different phases of the moon, particularly the the darker side that we have not seen, as well as all of the, all other places, I think as Dr. Salvamuthi said, and the moon is a kind of like a pristine form of our planet. If you look at the the geological origins of the moon, um, the our moon, for example, uh, is actually uh, unique in the solar system that it's actually, it, its size is a very appreciable part of its parent planet, namely our Earth, uh, when compared to all other moons of other planets in the solar system. So we, we believe that the moon was actually sort of pulled out of the Earth at some point uh, due to a collision uh, in, in some ways. And, and then because of the lack of atmosphere, the uh, uh, craters that are being formed are because of uh, asteroid bombardments that have uh, that the moon has suffered, which fortunately for us is not the case because the atmosphere actually burns up these uh, on a daily basis that that we don't hopefully you know go through uh, at all except maybe when the dinosaurs actually got extinct. So uh, the moon then actually tells us in some kind of a fossilized manner what the Earth was all about in the, in, in, the, in the distant past as well as what a planet actually suffers in terms of uh, asteroid bombardments. Um, so there is a lot to learn about the moon besides the resource uh, utilization aspect for the future. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.